I have a great friend in this town that has been a almost a lifelong friend, but ever since we've met, we have been lifelong friends. And he has written many, many wonderful, big and wonderful hits. His name is Jim McBride. And uh, Jim and I, back when we were with CBS Songs, you know, I spent back, would go in this little hole of a room somewhere and, and do knock one of these things out. But anyway, that, that particular day, I had been standing at the line, in line at the bank, and I just got this really creepy feeling that I was standing next to somebody that was going to pull out a gun and rob the place. So that just kind of, you know, the songwriter takes that. Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing happened. Now, I don't know whether that means schizophrenia set in there for a second or whether it was just normal paranoia. But, <clears throat> but I was in, in line at the bank, and I really had to, and I couldn't shake it. So when I got to the writing session, um, I told Jim, I, said, I laid the story out for him, and he said, hey, man, I know. I know. He said, I delivered... He delivered mail for like 18 years before he ever arrived in Nashville. And he said there were houses that he, you know, he just didn't want to walk up on the porch and even put the mail in the mailbox. He said there was a vibe there. So we started talking about this vibe. And then because I'm from South Carolina, then I started telling him some of the ghost stories that, that exist down there about the gray man and, and the white lady and all these places in Charleston and all this haunted stuff. So we continue on all morning, you know. And so... We then, because we didn't come up with any ideas, we do what all songwriters do. We went to lunch. <laughs> and uh, that cures a lot of things. So we went to lunch. And uh, we came out uh, and we said, look, why don't we, let's just take this ball and run with it. So we didn't know where we were going. Had not a clue of where we were going. Uh, and this song has caused so much controversy uh, not controversy, but interest, you know, radio stations calling us up and stuff. They wanted to know what happened to this person. But uh, we actually wrote it for, uh, we, we wrote it, we actually just wrote the song. And then it got pitched all over the place and it almost got cut three or four different times. And then we finally played it for Loretta Lynn, or Judy Harris did from, from CBS Songs. Played it for, and she said, you know what? She said, I can't even touch this. She said, I'm, I'm not a big enough artist to, of, of this type. She said, but Waylon would love this. So they sent it to Waylon immediately. And he was on the bus. She called him, actually, for us, which I thought was sweet. And uh, Waylon said, put it under a rock. I'm not cutting for six months. And usually that's the kiss of death. Because that means they're never going to cut it. But he did. And this was Waylon's last number one. She was a flower for the taking Her beauty cut like a knife He was a banker from Macon, swore to love her all his life. He bought her a mansion on the mountain with a formal garden and a lot of land. The paradise became her prison. That Georgia banker was a jealous man Every time he talked about her You could see the fire in his eyes He'd say, I would walk through hell on Sunday To keep my rose in paradise
Come see the gardener left alone. Now the banker, he's an old man. And that mansion's crumbling down. He sits all day and he stares at the garden. Not a trace of her was ever found. Every time he talked about her, you could see the fire in his eyes. He'd say, I wouldn't walk through hell on Sunday to keep my rose in paradise. There's a rose out in the garden Its beauty cuts just like a knife They say it even grows in the wintertime And blooms in the dead of the night Thank you very much. Thank you.